Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. <clears throat> Stand if you're physically able to do so. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. <clears throat> And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net unto the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going from thence, they saw two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Father, we ask you that you would just come and speak to our hearts this morning and give us your desires. Father, I pray for this service that we would see with your eyes, hear with your ears. And Father, have your heart beat. Lord, I just ask that this message would have the power and the unction from the Holy Spirit. And that Father, when it's complete and done and filed away, Lord, we know that we have done everything we could humanly possibly do. But Father, if you don't show up, and Lord, if you don't do what only you can do, it simply will not be good enough. Father, I pray for these that have come in here hurting, for these, Lord, that are struggling, for these, Lord, that have come in this place seeking an answer for their life. And Lord, I pray that uh, the sorrows and the cares of this world will be pushed aside just for a moment and let us sense your presence. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Last week we spoke about the subject of following. And we used the life of Matthew as an example of someone who did follow the Lord. And to make matters worse, Matthew was a dreaded tax collector, a man so hated by the common people that they did not even allow him into the temple. However, Jesus did something that some still could not believe when he went into Matthew's house full of tax collectors and sinners. You'll remember that story from last week. It was one thing to call Matthew and for another thing for him to follow and then for Jesus to go to Matthew's house was just an unbelievable act. Then in the midst of all of this, the enemies of Jesus showed up and waiting to upstage Christ and we learned that these evil men could not intimidate Jesus and then Jesus promptly put them in his place. With that as a backdrop, I wanted to show you something. Follow part two. I believe there is something that in fellowship of Christ that we need to hear this morning. Would you look up here before we nap and let me give you something? A thought occurred to me this week as I was studying and asking God what to say and what to do and certainly to to. to do the message that I felt God laid upon my heart and it was this. This preacher is afraid this morning for this reason. I'm afraid that people, all they see in Christ Jesus, now get this, all they see in Christ Jesus is salvation. Preacher, you just talk about this all the time. We, we want to be saved so we can escape hell and that's exactly right. But I'm afraid that some of us lose sight of living for Jesus on a daily basis. I'm afraid that some of us have got our mind towards that future event as, as I do. But in doing so, we lose sight of what Jesus can do for us in the immediate. Now listen to me and let me give you this. If Jesus Christ is my Savior, and by the way, He is my Savior... Can I suggest to you this morning that not only is He my Savior today, He's going to be my Savior throughout eternity. And with that said, He wants for me to live for Him today. Now listen to me. I feel like there's a lot of joyous Christians today because we've never got to the point of our life where we can live for Jesus 
listen, in the here and in the now. You see, I understand that one day I'm going to live with him eternity and I'm going to be up in heaven and I'm going to experience all of the things that Jesus wrote about and Jesus talked about. But before I get to that point, there's a part of me that still has to live here on earth. There's a part of me that still has to interact with people. There's a part of me that still has to incorporate the Word of God in my life so that it can come through my life and out of my life. And I just have a feeling that some of us in this room, we talk about salvation so much, and we talk about salvation in a future tense that we forget that salvation is in the present tense as well. And I just believe that we, un- we need to understand what fellowship is all about. Amen, preacher. Fellowship. There's more to it than we understand. But we come to another man that Jesus put out an invitation to follow as well. His name was Peter and his brother Andrew. In our text verses, we have some information, but it's a very brief information that, that Matthew paints for us here. Now, everybody look up here. I don't know about you, but Sometimes when I read the story, have you ever read the, the Bible and you've wondered in your mind, I wonder what else surrounded this? I wonder what else came about this? Or is there more to this than, than I'm seeing? I don't know about you, but I, I read the Bible with that in mind. I want to know everything of this verses that it teaches me. So here's what we've learned in Matthew. In Matthew, I get a snapshot of the verses that I just read. And, and it leaves me with some questions. Lord, so, so here's how I understand it. Lord, you just, you just called these men and the Bible tells me that when you just said, come and follow me, immediately they just dropped their nets and followed Jesus. Now, if that was the story, that's okay. Hey, come on with me. If that's just the story, I, okay, fine. But as Paul Harvey said, there's a little bit more to that than, than maybe we've ever seen before. In my time this morning, I, I hope to be able to connect some dots to this version in Matthew to something else that you are very, very, very familiar with. As a matter of fact, we get this rest of the story in Luke chapter 5. So if you have your Bible, let me just encourage you and really, 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 really encourage you to see what I'm talking about. So we read in, 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 in Matthew how Jesus spoke to these guys. They dropped their nets and followed Christ. But in Luke, I finally saw something and I finally got something that you need to see as well. So Luke chapter 5 and verse number 2. Luke chapter 5 and verse number 2. And, and it says this, And two of the ships standing by the lake... Now watch this. But the fishermen were gone out of them, and they were washing their nets. And he entered into the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when they had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. Now, now, now stay with me here. And Simon Peter answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night, and we have taken another. Nevertheless, at thy word, I like that statement, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes that their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were with them in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships, so they began to sing. Look up here. So what big deal you say? Well, let me give you something. I understand that if you've been around the the church a long time, these stories are very familiar to you. But let me, let's just look at this from a, from a fresh perspective. In verse number two, we see two boats pulled up to the shore. And you know this, but fishing was done at night and during the day was a time that these men would clean their nets. They would get the beer cans and the candy bar wrappers off their nets. You you understand what I'm talking about. So they would take their time and they would clean all of their nets, letting them dry, and they would roll them up, taking them home for storage for the next time of use. 
these men, Peter and Andrew, James and John, were cleaning their nets, pulling the trash off of them at the same time, and Jesus was doing something. Now get this in your mind. Jesus was doing something. So Jesus was backed up to the shoreline, and the, and the story don't tell us this, but naturally Jesus would do something like this. Peter, may I borrow your boat and get into it so that I can teach the people. And certainly Peter said, well, certainly you can do this. So backed up to the shoreline, Jesus got out into the boat. Peter pushed him a little bit out there. And so Jesus began to teach the people. Now, we're not certain of what he taught, but it's here regardless. It was from the lips of Jesus. Amen. So that's sufficient enough. So Jesus is teaching uh, whatever lesson he's trying to get this multitude of people to learn. Now, watch this. And here is the fishing guys. They're cleaning the nets. Watch. Pulling off all of the trash off their nets doing all of this hard work because they did not have any success that night, cleaning the nets, watch, listening to Jesus, cleaning their nets, rolling them up, and listening to Jesus. Working, listening, working, and listening. That's going to prove very, very important for you here in just a moment. So these guys had a mindset that sure Jesus could borrow their boat and, and, and be thrust out a little bit. And we, they heard what Jesus had to say. And can I tell you this? I imagine what Jesus had to say was appropriate for the crowd, was appropriate for the moment. And listen to me, was appropriate for those guys that were working, cleaning the nets and doing all of the things that they had to do to get ready for the next day. Would you agree with that? I believe whatever he had to say was that important. Now, we know that the place was the Sea of Galilee. Uh, uh, imagine during the, all of this time that Jesus is teaching, and he's sitting in the boat, and here's what my mind is, is, is seeing here. The waves is coming up and beating on the shore, and Maybe there's a gentle breeze coming off that lake. And maybe in the distance you can hear talking. And certainly in the distance you can hear these men grunting with those heavy nets. And they were folding them up and, and maybe making some small conversation between the two. And But listening to Jesus. Working and... But listening to Jesus. Listen to me, friends. The only way that you and I will ever get to Christ, the only way that my life will ever occur and make any difference in this world, if I'm going to listen to Jesus. Listen, it doesn't matter if I'm at work. It doesn't matter if I might play. It doesn't matter if I'm at my home. But here's what I want you to understand. If I'm going to function in this day in which God has placed me, I have got to place my life and I've got to listen to Jesus. Listen to me. It doesn't matter if I'm at work. It doesn't matter the distractions of the day. I have got to to have my mind pinged for the Lord Jesus Christ. Listening. 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 Can, can I be so bold to tell you something this morning and it's this? Maybe the reason why we are not functioning at 100% best is maybe because we are so busy that we're not listening. Maybe we're so busy with activities and getting ready for a Sunday and getting ready for your work and having the kids and doing all of this and running them here and doing all of this. And, and then when you come into the church, your body is exhausted. You haven't had time to listen to Jesus. I scream at you for 30 minutes. You walk out of this room. You're empty. You haven't got anything because, quite frankly, we haven't listened to Jesus. So here we see these men working and toiling. And, and may, may I tell you this, these nets were no ordinary, just simple light nets. It took work to clean them. It took work to make sure that they were ready for, for the next days of use. Listening to Jesus. But in verse number 4 of Luke, when Jesus finished teaching the crowd... His teaching was far from over. You see, in a lesson that, that, that he was going to teach, and that the Holy Spirit wants you and I to understand as well, but he wants us to get this. I understand that we live in such a pace today. Listen to me. Everyone in here lives in such a pace today. All, all of Facebook says this. I am so glad it's Friday. 
I mean, you've got a hundred thousand people posted. I'm so glad it's Friday, which is an indication of this, that your week is stressful, that your times that you spend is, 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 is crazy. You're running, you're doing all of this stuff. But have you ever asked yourself this question? Am I really? Watch. Am I really making a difference? And does all of this really matter? And this question, am I following? Come on. Am I following Jesus? Well, now, wait a minute. Everybody in here, let me give you this. Everybody in here just naturally assumes this. All right, now I'll give you this. Everybody in here assumes this. Preacher, you follow Jesus. Really? I can look at you and say, you follow Jesus. And here's what you're saying. Well, but you don't know, preacher, my heart. You don't know my thought life. Preacher, you don't know the places that I've gone, the people I've visited with, and the things that I've said. You see, we have just a natural assumption that when we come into a room this size and these many people, we just naturally assume that everybody in this room has got their life together. But let me just give you this. Probably less than half of us has got our life together. And another half is wondering why we don't got our life together. We just simply are falling apart at the seams. And we come to church and we're talking about following Jesus. And you still haven't got to the idea that Jesus is Savior and Lord of your life. Listen, not just for salvation. Yes, He saved my soul. Yes, He's going to take me to heaven. And yes, the rapture is going to happen. But can I tell you, there's got to be more in my life then just this hurried pace that I'm on. Following Jesus. Working. Following. Listening. Following. Listening. Working. Following. My friend, listen to me. If you're saved here this morning, you ought not to ever get out of that vein of following Jesus Christ. Well, uh, let me just say it this way. Probably most of your problems that you've ever encountered in your life has occurred when you quit following Jesus. Jesus was asking Peter to do something that he had done a thousand times before. But this time, Jesus wanted Peter to do it differently. Now, notice, if you will, in verse number 4 of, of, of Luke that we just read. Excuse me, chapter 5. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus asked him to do something that did not even make sense. In verse number 4, he says, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. Yeah, preacher, I get that. But there's a problem with this in Peter's mind. Peter had already cleaned and prepared his next nets for the next day. And to top it all off, Peter knows something that he don't think Jesus knows. Are you ready for this? That fishing was over for the day. Peter and the men had already been out all night. And Jesus says something that seems so foolish on the surface to Peter. He says this, let's go fishing my way. Now wait a minute, Jesus. Mm. Look, Look up here. In Peter's mind, and certainly our minds, here's what we would have thought. Now look, I've already got all of my nets cleaned up. I've already got them all rolled up. And I'm ready to go home and just call it a day. I rest through the day and I fish at night. Is somebody following this? And then all of a sudden, after Jesus finishes teaching, he looks at Peter and he says, I want you to fish my way, and it's about time you do it the way that I want you to do. Not the way your mind tells you to do. Not the way you've done it a thousand times before. And here's, if we're Peter, here's what we're thinking. Why didn't he tell me this before I cleaned my nets? Are, are you getting this? Now, Lord... I would have followed you a whole lot easier if you'd have just said this about 20 minutes ago. You see, my work for the day is done. I've already done all the things that I'm required to do. Jesus says, let's do it my way, not the way you're thinking. Have you ever, you ever followed Jesus enough to know this? That sometimes the way that you think that you ought to do things is not near what Jesus thinks you ought to do it? You ever figured that out? Now, wait a minute. Haven't you ever, hasn't Jesus ever answered a prayer in your life and that's really not the way you thought it'd be? Haven't you ever just followed Jesus and the very least thing that you thought ought to happen, happened? See, Jesus is telling Peter this, I, you've done this a thousand times, but you're going to have to trust me in this instant. 
Now listen to me. Please get this, Calvary Baptist Church. Peter was at the threshold of fellowship. Peter was at the very apex of following Jesus. And Jesus knew this. That next step, Peter, that you take, that next thing that you do is going to define your relationship with me for the rest of your life. I've come to believe some of you are right there where Peter is. Some of you are right in the very, very, very place that Peter was. And Jesus is telling you, I don't want you to do it your way. I want you to clean your mind. I want you to clean it of all the things that you think ought to happen. And I want you to do this. I want you to trust me. I want you to do it my way. But Lord, that way just don't make no sense. As a matter of fact, Lord, you don't understand. That way just goes against everything that I was ever taught. Somebody looking at me and understand what I'm talking about. Peter wanted to be kind to Jesus. And he said in verse number 5, this jumped out at me, and let me show you something. And Simon answered and said unto him, look at verse 5, he says, Master, Master. Now, in that day and time, that was just a polite term. That's like calling somebody Mr. That's like just a just a high form of respect. Why? Because there were traveling rabbis, uh, 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 thousands of traveling rabbis with their own little groups that were traveling around and doing their own deal. So what Peter says was master or sir or yes, I understand, just giving Jesus a a title of respect. Listen to me. He says, master, sir, okay, I'm really not buying this, but I heard you teaching over here as I was cleaning the nets. And there's something that you said in that teaching. There's something when I was cleaning these nets that just made sense to me. I I really can't explain it, but master, teacher, sir, if you want me to go back out, it don't make no sense to me, but if I've got to do that, well, look, I'm going to do it. Calvary Baptist Church, I'm sure that some of you have been saved a long time and maybe just a short time, but here's what you've understood. Doing it God's way may go contrary to your nature, but I will submit to this. It's the best way. You see, there's things when I read my Bible I don't understand. There, there's, there's, in, there's, there's situations that I don't get and there's things that I try to rationalize in my mind and I'm saying, God, it just doesn't make sense. But all the while, He's just simply telling me to trust Him. I know what you need. I know the steps that you need to take. I know the direction you need to understand. But, but Lord, you don't understand my plight. I'm, I'm suffering in my home life. I'm suffering in my spiritual life. Can't you hear Jesus simply say, look, everybody look up here. Can't you hear Jesus simply saying, follow me. Follow me. Don't lose me here because there's something that I want to show you here in just a minute. Peter and his partners had been fishing at night for a reason. Listen to this. At night, their waters are cool and the fish come up on the surface. In the day, when the sun comes up, the waters get hot And the fish go lower. So here's what Peter knew. When the water is cool, it's at night. And because I use the dragnet fashion, I can do a lot of fishing that way. But preach, uh, but God, you don't understand. Jesus, here's what you're not seeing. At day, when this water is hot, the fish are in the bottom and I'm not going to catch anything. See, this is what Peter knew. And can I tell you this? Listen to me. I don't know if Peter thought this, but do you think maybe he said something like this? Jesus, you're a carpenter. I'm not so sure you know about fishing. I'm a fisherman. I get this thing. Don't you understand? I'm the one that gets this thing. I'm the one that goes out all the time. And Lord, not to have any disrespect for you, but don't you understand the daytime fishing just doesn't work here. I use the nets, Jesus says. Launch out. Trust me. Individuals, 
you that are going through something right now that you don't even think your parents know, you don't even think the preacher knows, you don't even think God knows. Here's what I want to tell you this morning. Trust Him. Peter just, listen, Peter just this one time, he says, do it my way. So differently than you've ever done it before. Now, we do not know what Peter was thinking, but can I tell you this? Peter just simply says, look at, look at the Bible. Let me show you what he was saying. We have told, verse 75, we've told all night, taking nothing. Look at this last phrase. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Because you say so, Jesus, not because I think it will work, not because I think I'll catch anything, not because I think this is a good idea, but because I've listened to you just enough, I have respect for you just enough, I'm going to give this a try. Amen. I don't even believe, Jesus, what you're telling me is going to work, but I'll try it. Think what was hanging in the balance? Peter had just enough faith or respect for Jesus to trust Him. Listen to me. Some of you have been saved a number of years. Some of you are sitting in this room. You have followed Jesus more than I've been alive. But yet you still struggle with trust issues. You still struggle with whether or not God has your best interest in mind. Some of you are going through so much turmoil in your life and you just simply have quit coming to church. You have quit, you have quit listening to Jesus. You have quit following like you used to follow because here Here's your mindset. He just simply don't know what I'm going through. Amen. He just simply don't understand the dilemmas that I face. If Jesus was who He said He was, I wouldn't be going through all of this. Really? Well, there's some lessons, obviously, that you need to learn that you're not going to learn it either way. To show you that Peter was real sure what Jesus was saying, <laughs> look what he says. In verse number 4, Peter said, we were to, Peter didn't believe it, but here's what he said. Watch, and I'm trying to hurry. He said this. All right, Lord, I'll go out. I'll roll out my nets again. I'll get them wet again. I'll do all of this work again, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm only going to take one net. Because quite frankly, I think this is the most ridiculous idea I've ever heard in my life. Fishing during the day. Really? Fishing during the day when all of the fish is at the bottom? and my nets are not going to go to the bottom. I've just got a real limited thing that I can do here. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let down my little puny net. Here's what he was thinking. I'm going to let down my little puny net, and I'm just going to show. When I get back to shore, here's what I'm going to tell Jesus. I told you so. I told you this wasn't going to work. Can I listen to this? I believe this describes what some of you and I are today. We know that the Lord has been after you to make one step of faith, that one thing you think that might be foolish, and perhaps your family doesn't even agree with, but there's something inside of you that says, Preacher, I really want to trust. I really want to see if this thing called Christianity is real. I really in my heart are longing to know this. And to show you that Peter was real sure, he says, I'll give you a net, Jesus. How many times have we come to church and we have told Jesus, I'll give you a net. I can't do no more than that. Because in the past, Jesus, I'm not so sure that you've understood really where I'm being at. So here's my net. Do what you want to with it. You see, you've come to church a thousand times. You've gotten familiar with everything. But could it be that the Lord is speaking to your heart and trying to show you a way that's better for you? In your mind, you have your way. In your heart, you have a direction you think you ought to go. But Jesus is trying to teach you a lesson and tell you this. Get all of that out of your mind and let me show you something that's going to blow you away. It's going to be my way and my way is always better than your way. Can I tell you this? Peter, you trust me at night. But I'm going to ask you, Trust me in the day. Wow, wow, wow. How confident are you right now that the Lord is watching over your life and matching your deliverance with your faith? Can I tell you something this morning? We have, as Baptist people, we have such of the small faith in general. Listen, I have faith that your situation is going to work out. <laughs> but in mine. But in mine. You see, I can pray, I can pray thunder and rain down on your life and say, God bless them. And when He blesses you, I say, boy, there's God at display again. But my life? 
Can somebody understand what I'm saying? So here's what we do. We come to Calvary Baptist Church week and week and week and week and week and week again. And we always bring that one little net because here's what you think. I'm just going to let God just fill my one little net and then I'm going to leave the church and that's all I'm going to get. You see, I don't think God can do any more than just that one little net full. I just don't think He can do it. Even though He's the one that created everything, even though He's the one that created me, even though He knows the number of my hairs on my head, I just don't believe He can do any more than just that. Could it be that some of us struggle with that in our lives? Could it be that we really, really don't give a proper view of who Jesus was? Listen to this. There is something that this passage teaches us that will ever, if we ever get a hold of it, it can change you forever. Notice something. If you have a pen, I want you to, I want you to see something that's very crucial. In verse number six of uh, Luke chapter five, please get this. Luke chapter 6 and verse number, uh, Luke 5 verse 6, and when they had this done. Now listen to this. I think this is interesting. And when they had this done, not when they had believed so, or thought so, or intended so, or prayed so, but when they had done so. Doing makes the difference. Listen to me. The reason why some of us is stuck in neutral is because we've never trusted Jesus enough to get out of our comfort zone and do it the way He wants us to do it. You see, the Bible says this, only when they did it did they fully understand that Jesus' ways was the best way. In Luke chapter 5, verse number 7, it says, And they beckoned with their partners, which were in the other ship, they could come and help them. And they caught so much fish, watch this, that their one little puny net, guess what happened to it? It break. You see, when they went out to go fishing that day, they didn't expect Jesus to have anything in that net. Listen, they had already made their minds up like some of you have done this morning. I'm going to go this far and that's it. So when they went out there, they took that one net. It was so much that it filled, the Bible says, both, listen to me, both ships, amen. And it was such a load that both of those ships began, according to the Bible, sink. You know what God says? Isn't it funny when you do it my way, what I can do with you? Isn't it funny when you just trust me to do things that you've done a thousand times before what I can really do in your life? But you don't understand. I have fished this way all of my life. Peter said, Lord, you don't understand. I've done it this way all of my life. And Jesus has said, but trust me to do it a different way. Just trust me enough to do it my way. And you're going to see what I can do when you just simply, come on, trust me. Some of you are hanging on the balance with what I just said. Some of you have had some trust issues this very last week. You have, you have, you have bartered, you have begged, you have done all of these things in your life, and it just simply doesn't make sense to you. So let me, let me hurry up and show you in verse number 10. If you have your Bibles, let me show you this. I thought this was interesting, because this is something that I think that sometimes here we are. You understand if you have a red letter Bible, in verse number 10 it says, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Now, why in the world did Jesus put fear not? Well, let me show you something. I don't know about you, but I think this is kind of neat. Look at verse number 8. And Simon Peter saw it. He fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Look what the 9 says. For he was astonished at just fear. He was astonished that Jesus could do something with fish. Listen to me. I'm telling you, please get this. Jesus is not just in the fish business. He's in the people business. Listen, He can fill your net till it breaks, but I want to tell you, if He loves a fish like that, can I tell you, certainly He loves you. Certainly He's got a plan for your life. Certainly the direction that you need to travel. But here's what you do when you sit in the church. But I just don't know. I've been this way all of my life and I'm just not about to bend now. Don't you think that's where Peter was? I've done this fishing a thousand times before. Jesus says, but trust me, do it my way. Uh, No, 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 no. Preacher, that's a good little Bible story, but that don't affect my life, really. Really? 
the reason why you are where you are now is maybe because, listen to me, that one decision that Peter made, and I'm fixing to be finished, that one decision that Peter made had him follow Jesus for the rest of his life. One decision to simply say, I'll do it your way. Let me tell you what Jesus' way is right quick. We're done. Jesus' way is for you that have never known Christ Jesus is to acknowledge Him as Lord and Savior of your life. That's Jesus' way. Jesus is asking you to trust Him enough to invite Him in your life so that these next steps that you're going to travel, that He'll be with you. All right, we get that. Well, preacher, what about if I've already done that? All right, let me give you this very quick. Then here's what Jesus is telling you. Just trust me. The preacher, you don't understand how hard my life is. Come on. Follow me. Follow me. Come on. Follow me. Preacher, I wish I could believe that. Here's how you're going to believe it. It's when you take that step. The only reason the disciples believed it is because they did it. They acted on what Jesus did said. And the reason why you are at where you're at is because you're afraid to act and do what Jesus told you to do. Now here's what I know as a preacher. I know this well enough that there are some things that you're involved in that you need to come right here this morning and get rid of it. Because it's dangerous to your life and one step could cause you to go in the wrong direction. Somebody amen that. There's somebody here that this church it ought to be a church home, ought to be somebody that you love and join and unite with. I know that. There's somebody here that their life is going the opposite direction. You need to come and say, Preacher, I'm ready to give Jesus my life. I'm ready to surrender to whatever He wants me to do because I am sick of doing it my way. Even if He asks you to do it in a way that just don't make sense. Fishing in the day, really? We're going to fish in the day? That's the most stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Jesus says, it's not stupid when I tell you to do it. It's not stupid when you do it my way. You see, stupid is staying right where you are, thinking the same things you think, doing the same things you do over and over and over. Not to be irreverent to you, but that's stupid. That don't make no sense. Isn't it funny, Chief? Hell, we'll just keep doing the same things over and over and over and over and expecting a different result. Isn't that funny? My friend, how we have a different result is you trust Jesus. Take that next step even though you're not real sure like Peter, but can I tell you this? Oh, what a difference he can make on one life. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we're here this morning. We thank you, Lord, in spite of our humanness, in spite of our difficulties, in spite of our mindset, in spite of all of the things that we've ever taught, said, or done, we've come to this point of our life to where we need to make that step towards you. Some of you... In this room, if you would just dare to make that next step, trust God for the next day. Trust God for the next meal. Trust God for the next thought. Just wonder where we would be as a church. I shudder to think if all God's people would band together and be godly people in thought, word, and deed, what a difference we could make in our communities and in our homes. Father, there are some in this room that have struggled all week long with some issues they have should a long time ago got past. There are some in this room, Lord, that they have thought about this service and listened to what Peter said and done, and you're not sure that you would have done the same thing. You see, when Peter saw who Jesus was, it no longer became about fish. It became about Jesus. And see, you've been so focused on your own problem that you have squeezed Jesus Christ plumb out. Christ is here, and he's simply telling you to trust me. Even though you've done things your way a thousand times, he's saying, trust me, follow me. I can show you a better way. In the quietness of this room, you that are here, maybe you've struggled with fellowship issues in your life. Maybe there's something, a burden on your heart right now. You say, preacher, I've done it this way a thousand times before, but I'm willing to give God a shot. Preacher, pray for me this week as, as I'll learn this fellowship of Christ Jesus. That you just lift up your hands all over the room. Others, others, others. 
many others. Others, others. Yes, others. I want to be in step with Christ. I want to be a follower. I don't want to get ahead. I want to be a follower. If you're here this morning, you've never trusted Jesus as Savior. Your heart is yearning and aching for a new direction and a new beginning. Jesus can wipe your slate clean. What better chance to give God a, your life and to let you follow Him as if you trust Him as your Savior to have a brand new beginning. Father, I know there are decisions in this room. I felt it when I walked in. I know there could be lives hanging in a balance. I know there's people that's been doing things their way for a long time. But even as Peter been done it all his life that same way, and you just simply said, Peter, do it my way. Just trust me. What an outcome. Father, I know there's an outcome here for each and every one of us if we'll take it. Would you stand quietly and reverently as God so leads? Would you come?